Alright guys, I'll just take one minute of your precious time. Just wanted to let all of you know that if you want to practice all these questions using artificial intelligence and practice on a portal which is as similar as your actual PT exam which will give you exact scores which you are likely to get in your exam, just register on languageacademy.com.au. You can practice as many questions. On top of that, you can get instant feedback, instant scores and instant suggestions on what are the things you need to work on and how to improve your mistakes and turn them into your strength. You can also take a full scored mock test. You'll get a full scorecard. You'll get in-depth analysis. You'll get tutors feedback. One mock test is available for free and four sectional mock tests are available for free. You just need to go on languageacademy.com.au, register over there. Use Google Chrome, log in and practice and make sure you get your desired score at the earliest. Now you can continue with the video or you can just log on to languageacademy.com.au and practice all these questions over there as well. All the very best. I'll see you very soon. According to the Roman Catholic Church individuals of the purest faith remain in a lifelike state after deaths, their bodies resist decomposition for centuries. Numerous cases were found, in which people have been exhumed years after their deaths and were found preserved. The Church viewed this as a measure of sanctity and incorruptible people, whose bodies miraculously resist decay were canonized by the Church. Incorruptibility became a component of canonization the process of becoming sainted, this process of canonization included the prospective saint appearing in visions to people after death, performing miracles, either after or during life and incorruptibility of their dead bodies. In an effort to send a strong signal to the world in Israeli society that the Palestinians are for peace and appreciate the efforts of statesmen like Shimon Peres, Mr. Mohammed Abbas, the Prime Minister of Palestine, has decided to attend the funeral of Mr. Shimon Peres. Mr. Shimon Peres was buried at Mount Herzl, Israel's national cemetery, according to his own funeral plan, in the presence of large numbers of foreign dignitaries and under unprecedented security arrangement. The pre-cyclone exercise for ensuing cyclone season was conducted at Chennai during the 20th to the 24th of April 2016. All stakeholders including National Disaster Management Authority, non-government organizations, NGOs, Indian Air Force, Navy, National Disaster Response Force, National Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasting and experts from IMD, Indian Meteorological Department, were participated in the exercise.
Upper Air Laboratory. Bangalore has upgraded the pilot balloon. PB observatories at Gangtok, Pune and Ratnagira into GPS-based radio sounding. RS, radio wind. RW, observatories. Previously these PB stations were observing upper air profile of wind direction and wind speed employing optical the autolite manually. After upgradation, these stations will capable of getting upper air profile of temperature, humidity, pressure, geopotential height, wind direction and wind speed automatically to 35 km height. This is the story of a tribal boy who was not content with the life he had. He was loved by all. But he was not happy. His father saw that something troubled him. He asked his son the reason. He said to his father that he wanted to be an archer. He wanted to be the disciple of a great teacher who taught only the sons of kings. He said to his father that he knew they belonged to hunting tribe. He did not want to be a mere hunter. He approached the teacher and asked the teacher to train him to be a mighty warrior. The great teacher rejected his plea, saying that this place belongs only to king's sons. Though he was dejected, he did not lose hope. He made a statue of the great teacher and started worshipping him. He believed if he could practice before his teacher he would learn archery. There is a force of attraction between the molecules. This attraction is the greatest in solids. Therefore, solids are hard and cannot flow. In liquids, the force of attraction between molecules is less as compared to solids. Thus, we can say that the molecules are loosely packed. Liquids can, therefore, be easily poured or can flow. In gases, the force of attraction between the molecules is the least. Therefore, the molecules of a gas can easily flow in any direction. If we spray perfume in one corner of the room we can smell it in another corner. This happens because of the molecules of perfume diffuse in the air and moves from one corner to another. Molecules are made of atoms. Every molecule has one or more atoms. For example, each molecule of oxygen contains two atoms of oxygen. This is written as O2. Similarly, the molecule of hydrogen is written as H2. It is difficult to know how to place Montesquieu if you're the kind of person who likes to categorize historian, political philosopher, sociologist, jurist or if you think the Persian letters a novel, a novelist he was all these things, perhaps, as some have, he could be placed among that almost extinct species, the man of letters the books that make up, the spirit of the laws have had the most influence on later thinkers, and in them as in his equally great considerations on the causes of the grandeur and decadence of the Romans, he makes his underlying purpose clear. It is to make the random, apparently meaningless variety of events understandable. He wanted to find out what the historical truth was. His starting point then was this almost endless variety of morals, customs, 
ideas, laws and institutions and to make some sense out of them. However simple or complex the chain of events in any given situation, when looked into it usually reveals a train of causal relationships they are seen to be linked in some way. The methods of analysis aim to establish these relationships and provide a solid background for useful generalizations based on what at first appear to be separate events. The first step in this process is to collect facts and then see if any particular patterns emerge. If they do, it then becomes possible to form theories related to the facts and this type of empirical theory forms a useful basis for analysis and prediction. However, on its own this theory is not enough. The essential second step is to test it by collecting more facts and by checking predictions against events. These new facts may mean you have to modify the theory, bearing in mind that new facts can only either disprove or support a theory they cannot prove it to be right. There have been many studies in America of the opinions and behavior of university lecturers and professors, and of well-known free or public thinkers who are not attached to a university or other institution, which show that those who are recognized as being more successful or productive as scholars in their field, or are at the best universities, are much more likely to have critical opinions. That is to say that they are more likely to hold liberal views in the American use of that word than those of their colleagues who are less creative or who have less of a reputation. The better a university is, as measured by the test results of its students or by the prestige of its staff, the more likely it has been that there will be student unrest in a relatively left of center faculty. Are you studying anything new these days? Well, I have started to study about astronomy. Oh cool. Yeah, I really like stars. Me too. They are really pretty. I like to watch stars at night at my house because there is really less light but I do not know about the constellations. So, is there anything that you have been studying these days? Recently started to study cooking. Cooking. The growth of the modern state brought with it the development of mass political parties and the emergence of professional politicians. A man, whose occupation is the struggle for political power, may go about it in two ways. First, a person who relies on their political activities to supply their main source of income is said to live off politics, while a person who engages in full-time political activities, but who doesn't receive an income from it, is said to live for politics. Now, 
a political system in which recruitment to positions of power is filled by those who live for politics is necessarily drawn from a property-owning elite, who are not usually entrepreneurs. However, this is not to imply that such politicians will necessarily pursue policies which are wholly biased towards the interests of the class they originate from. Almost everyone has heard of the London Stock Exchange, but relatively few know anything about the London Metal and Commodity Exchanges yet these markets have a greater influence on world economies, because they set global prices for some of the essential raw materials for industry and food manufacture. The LME provides three basic services to the world's non-ferrous metal trade. First, it is a market where large or small quantities of metal of a guaranteed minimum standard can be bought and sold on specific trading days. Second, it acts as a barometer of world metal prices. And third, it is a hedging medium. That is, it can help traders get some protection from price fluctuations that occur for economic, political or financial reasons. Those of you who've never heard the term Neo-Latin may be forgiven for thinking it's a new South American dance craze. If you're puzzled when I tell you it has something to do with the language of Romans, take heart. Over the years many classes who have confessed they are not really sure what it is either. Some have assumed that they are so-called late Latin, written at the end of the Roman Empire. Others have supposed it must have something to do with the Middle Ages. Or perhaps it's that pseudo-Latin which my five- and seven-year-old boys seem to have gleaned from the Harry Potter books, useful for spells and curses that they zip one another with makeshift paper ash ones. No. In fact, Neo-Latin is more or less the same as the Latin that was written in the ancient world, classical Latin. So, what's so new about it? Before the beginning of the 1900s, the only way to obtain pearls was by collecting very large numbers of pearl oysters from the ocean floor by hand. The oysters or sometimes mussels were brought to the surface, opened, and searched. More than a ton of these had to be checked in order to find just three or four quality pearls. Divers often descended to depths of over 100 feet and just one single breath. Now, of course, this exposed them to hostile creatures and dangerous waves, not to mention drowning. In some areas, divers put grease on their bodies to conserve heat and they held a large object like a rock to descend so they didn't have to exert effort going down. Today, pearl diving has pretty much been supplanted by cultured pearl. Particles are implanted in the oyster to encourage the formation of pearls farms. One seminal difference in policy remains. The coalition has not matched what is labor's most important innovation promise. 
that is to bring together responsibilities for innovation, industry, science and research under one single federal minister. Innovation responsibilities currently lie within the powerful Department of Education and Science, and while there is a separate industry department, it has little influence within cabinet. This has hampered policy development and given Australia's innovation policies a distinctly science and research bias. It is the scientists rather than the engineers who call the tune in innovation policy in Canberra. So it's no surprise our policies are all about boosting government-funded research and later commercializing their results. For the first time, Japanese researchers have conducted a real-life experiment that shows how some traffic jams appear for no apparent reason. They placed the 22 vehicles on a single track and asked the drivers to cruise around at a constant speed of 30 km an hour. At first, traffic moves smoothly. But soon, the distance between cars started to vary and vehicles clumped together at one point on the track, but the jam spread backward around the track, like a shockwave at a rate of about 20 km an hour. Real-life jams move backward at about the same speed. Well in 2004, we integrated ticketing in southeast Queensland. So we have introduced a paper ticket that allowed you to travel across all the three modes in southeast Queensland. So bus, train and ferry and the second stage of integrated ticketing is the introduction of a smart card. And the smart card will enable people to store value so to put value on the card, and then to use the card for traveling around the system. Brooke and her colleague Mark Newman studied who swapped messages with whom on a popular online dating platform in the month of January 2014. They categorized users by desirability using PageRank, one of the algorithms behind search technology. Essentially if you receive a dozen messages from desirable users, you must be more desirable than someone who receives the same number of messages from average users. Then they asked, how far, out of their league, do online daters tend to go when pursuing a partner? I think people are optimistic realists in other words, they found that both men and women tended to pursue mates just 25% more desirable than themselves. A novel invention for helping farmers to dry out hay more quickly has won a University of Glasgow graduate a prestigious design award, Gavin Armstrong, 23, from Kippen, 
Sterlingshire scooped the Glasgow 1999 design medal for his design for a swath inverter a device for flipping over a hay crop to help dry out the damp underside. Dry hay is an essential farmyard food source for sheep and cows. Gavin came up with the design as part of his product design engineering degree course, run in conjunction with Glasgow School of Art. He built a working prototype of the device which is powered and towed by a tractor and uses a pair of parallel belts to invert the swath. The rest of the universe appears to be made of a mysterious, invisible substance called dark matter 25% and a force that repels gravity known as dark energy 70%. Scientists have not yet observed dark matter directly. It doesn't interact with baryonic matter. It's completely invisible to light and other forms of electromagnetic radiation, making dark matter impossible to detect with current instruments. But scientists are confident it exists because of the gravitational effects it appears to have on galaxies and galaxy clusters. Clones of an eastern cottonwood, populous deltoids, in the Bronx and other city spots grew to double the biomass of clones planted outside small towns upstate or on Long Island, says Jillian Gregg, now of the Environmental Protection Agency's Western Ecology Division in Corvallis, or the growth gap comes from ozone damage, she and her New York colleagues report. Ozone chemists have known that concentrations may spike skyscraper high in city air, but during a full 24 hours, Rural trees actually get a higher cumulative ozone exposure from urban pollution that blows in and lingers. A series of new experiments now shows that this hang around ozone is the overwhelming factor in tree growth, the researchers say in the July 10 Nature. At the end of the colonial era, as many new nations gained independence, relative levels of economic development became an important criterion by which to distinguish between countries. The former colonial powers and wealthier parts of the world generally became known as advanced industrial or developed countries, while former colonies and poorer nations became known as less developed or more positively developing countries. Critics of the uneven distribution of wealth across the globe highlighted the role which wealth creation in some places had played in impoverishing poorer nations and, rather, described them as actively underdeveloped. The question as to whether economic change is developing or underdeveloping countries remains a vital issue, as the debate over sweatshops highlights.
color preferences many tests have shown that, in a very broad way, peoples in most parts of the world have similar color preferences. Blue is the most preferred and popular hue, followed in order by red, green, purple, yellow and orange, overlaying this basic order of color preference. However, are the responses of individuals, which of course vary widely and may also be very powerful, children are likely to have strong preferences for some colors and aversions to others, but sometimes will not admit to them, since outside factors may be influential in determining both color preferences and the way that they are expressed or suppressed. But look beyond fossil fuels for the most intriguing trends. One is that the energy intensity of the world economy the amount of energy it takes to produce $1 worth of income keeps falling, at a rate of about 2%. What this means is that even without any change in the relative shares of fossil-based and fossil-free sources in the world's energy mix, we could have 2% annual economic growth without increasing carbon emissions from energy use, of course that is not enough to address climate change and we need more economic growth than that. It is nonetheless a stunning number, which refutes the claim by some environmentalists that permanent economic growth is fundamentally incompatible with finite physical resources. uniquely stable. They seem to participate in no chemical reactions. But by understanding the stability of the noble gases, physicists discovered the key to chemical bonding itself. Dmitry Mendeleev added the noble gases to his periodic table in 1902, where he arranged the elements in rows and columns according to their atomic weight. Mendeleev was able to see repeating, or periodic, patterns in their properties, the noble gases appeared regularly in the periodic table, occurring in every eighth position, at least amongst the lighter elements. Small lakes with a surface area of less than 100 square meters represent the majority of global freshwater ecosystems. Many of these lakes are found in remote, often mountainous areas with no inflow and outflow. Yet in most of these lakes, there are fish. So how do fish reach lakes and ponds that are not connected to other bodies of water? This question was already addressed by some of the leading natural scientists of the 19th century such as Charles Darwin, Alfred Russell Wallace and Charles Lyell, who all came to the same conclusion water birds must be responsible for fish dispersal. And they had a plausible explanation for this. Fish eggs of some species are sticky and can survive for some time out of water.
Affordable early years education and childcare potentially enables parents, particularly mothers, to be in paid employment. International studies have found that countries with greater enrollment rates in publicly funded or provided childcare also have higher maternal employment rates. Although entangling causal relationships is complex, from the point of view of the household additional income, especially for the less well-off, is itself associated with better outcomes for children, as child poverty has been shown to be a key independent determinant of children's outcomes, from the point of view of the public purse, as mothers enter employment they are likely to claim fewer benefits and to generate extra revenues through income tax. seminars are not designed to be mini lectures. Their educational role is to provide an opportunity for you to discuss interesting and or difficult aspects of the course. This is founded on the assumption that it is only by actively trying to use the knowledge that you have acquired from lectures and texts that you can achieve an adequate understanding of the subject. If you do not understand a point it is highly unlikely that you will be the only person in the group in that position. You will invariably be undertaking a service for the entire group if you come to the seminar equipped with questions on matters which you feel you did not fully understand. The seminar is to provoke discussion. In our studies, those people on a high-protein diet lost the same amount of weight as those on a higher-carbohydrate diet, since the two diets offered an equal amount of kilojoules and the same amount of fat. However, body composition, that is, the ratio of fat to muscle, showed greater improvement among those people on the higher-protein diet. When the participants in other studies were allowed to eat until they were no longer hungry, those on the higher-protein diet lost more weight than those on the higher-carbohydrate diet, even after more than a year. The reduction in hunger and the beneficial effect on muscle provided by the higher protein diet is mostly related to its protein content, while the reduced triglyceride levels and enhanced fat loss seem to be related to its lower amounts of carbohydrate. Progressive enhancement is a design practice based in the idea that instead of designing for the least capable browser, or mangling our code to make a site look the same in every browser, we should provide a core set of functionality and information to all users, and then progressively enhance the appearance and behavior of the site for users of more capable browsers. It's very productive development practice. Instead of spending hours working out how to add drop shadows to the borders of an element in every browser, we simply use the standards-based approach for browsers that support it and don't even attempt to implement it in browsers that don't.
crime is an integral part of everyday life. It is a prominent feature in the news and is a popular subject for fictional portrayal. Most students commencing legal studies will have some experience of crime, whether directly, as a victim of crime or indirectly through exposure to media coverage. This means that most offenses covered on the syllabus, such as murder, theft and rape will be familiar terms. This tends to give students the impression that they know more about criminal law than they do about other subjects on the syllabus. This can be a real disadvantage in terms of the academic study of criminal law because it tends to lead students to rely on preconceived notion of the nature and scope of the offenses and to reach instinctive, but often legally inaccurate, conclusions. The foreign policy of a state, it is often argued, begins and ends with the border. No doubt an exaggeration. This aphorism nevertheless has an element of truth. A state's relation with its neighbors, at least in the formative years, are greatly influenced by its frontier policy, especially when there are no settled borders. Empire builders in the past sought to extend imperial frontiers for a variety of reasons subjugation of kings and princes to gain their allegiance, as well as handsome tributes or the coffers of the state, and security of the core of the empire from external attacks by establishing a string of buffer states and areas adjoining the frontiers. The history of British Empire in India was no different. So a virus is something that you can't see by normal light microscopy. You need very advanced techniques for electron microscopy to see it. But that virus is not able to reproduce itself without a host and us as human beings are made up of lots of different cell types and we are interested in understanding at the molecular level how that virus infects the liver and why does it infect the liver and it doesn't infect the heart or it doesn't infect other tissues. Okay. So let's have a quick summary. Because we've galloped through a bit of philosophy here. I've suggested that we're rationally required to do what morality requires of us. So it's a reason that tells us what we should and shouldn't do. If we don't do what rationally requires of us this is because we're ignorant. Or, if you don't agree with Aristotle or Socrates, we're possibly weak or corrupt. And we may be ignorant of what morality requires of us because we're relying on others. So what's all this got to do with climate change?
Why do we need more entrepreneurs right now? The entrepreneurs who create and run our businesses, who play by the rules, are in fact critical to our success as a nation. We need them especially today. Business, not government, will end this recession. Government must help by creating fair rules, sound monetary policy, and by protecting our fellow citizens in periods when they are jobless. We have to make way for the new entrepreneurial firms that will push us to frontiers of innovation. An economist sees the world basically through a typical microeconomic toolkit that involves things like thinking at the margin, rationality, opportunity cost, trade-offs, economists like any other discipline, rules, and its own way of seeing the world. So basically economics, or economists in general tend to apply microeconomic concepts like that to explain the way humans behave and to make predictions about the future. Finally, we take a look at how to mix and unmix liquids at the flick of a switch. Sandrine tells us more. Oil and water don't usually mix, but the new chemical sensitive to light has been added here to blend them together. When exposed to UV light, the chemical changes its structure and becomes soluble in water. This causes two layers to form with the oil floating on top of the water chemical combo. This method should be cheaper than the current alternative which involves using high energy centrifuges. To begin with, you should be standing in the main floor of the British Library. British Library situated in the Euston Road next to some pipe crustacean press, in the foyer to the left of the information desk. It was a large white staircase. Follow this up towards the gallery at the top of the stairs. Pause and look to your left for attention. This is Robert Cotton, born in 1570, and died in 1631. Cotton was a member of Parliament but he's mainly known as a great antiquarian collector of manuscripts. It is the covenant we have a great depth and the survival of many English manuscripts.
emerald is defined by its green color. To be an emerald, a specimen must have a distinctly green color that falls in the range from bluish green to green to slightly yellowish green. To be an emerald, the specimen must also have a rich color. Stones with a weak saturation or light tone should be called green barrel. If the barrel's color is greenish blue then it is an aquamarine. If it is greenish yellow it is heliodor. This color definition is a source of confusion. Which hue, tone, and saturation combinations are the dividing lines between green barrel and emerald. Professionals in the gem and jewelry trade can disagree on where the lines should be drawn. Some believe that the name emerald should be used when chromium is the cause of the green color and that stones colored by vanadium should be called green barrel. Ronald Cotton went to prison for rape. The victim picked him from a lineup convinced she was accurate. She picked him again years later when his case was reopened. This second lineup included the actual rapist. After 11 years behind bars, Cotton was later exonerated by DNA evidence. Experts say that the current lineup format pressures witnesses to identify a suspect, even when they lack confidence. So researchers are trying to improve the accuracy of such identifications. One recent study had more than 900 participants watch a short film of a staged crime. Up to a week after watching the film, the viewers looked at photos of suspects one at a time, and rated how confident they were about each one's guilt. Half of the participants could take as long as they wanted to look at the photos. The other half had to decide within a few seconds. The next topic is going to be black holes. And this is a similar situation. 15, 20 years ago black holes were sort of poised precariously on the boundary between theoretical physics and science fiction. A boundary that is more porous than you might believe. But again, in the past 15 years or so this has been converted into a standard topic in observational astronomy. There are dozens, probably hundreds of objects we can point to in the sky and say, yes those things are black holes. And so now, the current topic of research is do these things that we are pretty sure are black holes actually behave in the incredibly bizarre, science fiction manner that the theoretical physicists have been talking about for the past 30 or 40 years. So, to what extent are these very exotic behaviors actually manifested in real life? As yet, the new explanation is incomplete. So far, the researchers have only computed the effects caused by one property of matter falling into a black hole, its electric charge. They have not shown the effect of its mass, which would also be important. Their calculations therefore account only for part of the information that is lost. But they have established a principle that may lead to a full accounting of the matter. That would let physicists sleep easy in their beds, in the knowledge that reality is once again behaving at least approximately, how they think it ought to.
As it ages, white paper turns a distinctive yellow. But why? To find out, scientists artificially aged modern paper to reveal the changes on the molecular level. The research is in the journal Physical Review Letters. For 48 days, three unbleached paper samples aged rapidly in reactors that simulated different environmental conditions. The researchers then compared the artificially aged samples to the real deal. Three pieces of paper crafted in 15th century Europe. This technique allowed them to gauge the types and amounts of changes going on. About 90% of the weight of old paper is cellulose, the sturdy material that makes up plant cell walls. But over time cellulose fibers oxidize. The process modifies parts of various molecules and turns them into what are called chromophores, which absorb light. music, film and video game makers face a new online, digital world. And some are testing a revolutionary pricing system. Pay what you want. But a new study finds that when consumers can name their own price, many may opt out of buying at all. The study is in the proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. For the research, tour boat passengers posed for photos. Each boat ride announced a price of $15 per picture. But they then charged either $15 $5, or the option to pay what you want. As expected, the fewest tourists purchased photos when they had to pay full price. But more customers bought photos when they cost $5 than when prices were pay what you want which could have saved passengers even more. Americans still fall short of the recommended daily portions of fruits and vegetables, and kids are notoriously averse to veggies at the school cafeteria. So researchers tested whether visual cues of healthful foods could increase consumption at a grade school with 800 students. First the scientists determined how many kids put carrots and green beans on their trays and how much they ate. Three months later they did the same analysis. But on the second day, the trays had pictures of carrots and green beans in the trays, compartments. On the day with the photo cues, more than twice as many kids took green beans as on the control day, and more than three times as many kids took carrots. Average consumption per student went up as well. The study was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. Global warming might seem like a botanical boon. After all, milder temperatures and more carbon dioxide and nitrogen should feed flora. But a 10 year study has found that any initial positive effect on plant growth from climate change may soon disappear. The report is in the journal Nature Climate Change. Researchers transplanted vegetation from four grassland ecosystems to lower, warmer elevations. They also modified the precipitation at the transplant sites based on altered rainfall estimates. For the first year, the plants did great, producing more biomass and churning out more oxygen for us. But their productivity went down for the rest of the decade. What happened? Warming did speed up the nitrogen cycle, which should have increased nitrogen's availability as plant fertilizer.
I would have guessed a Wild West performer was practicing with a bullwhip while also vacuuming but no. That sound is apparently produced by the Aurora Borealis. The Northern Lights. Since 2000 researchers at Finland's Aalto University have been collecting audio. As part of what's called the Auroral Acoustics Project. Folk tales have long held that the lights also produce odd sounds. But the claims were hard to prove. And some researchers thought that any noises produced by the energetic particles that caused the light show would be far too high in the sky to be heard on the ground. But the latest results indicate that at least some sounds are produced very close to the ground. A setup of three ground-based microphones allowed researchers to estimate that the sounds occur perhaps just 70 meters up. The way I look back in the past is by using the fossilized remains of deep water corals. You can see an image of one of these corals behind me. It was collected from close to Antarctica, thousands of meters below the sea. So, very different than the kinds of corals you may have been lucky enough to see if you've had a tropical holiday. So I'm hoping that this talk will give you a four-dimensional view of the ocean. Two dimensions such as this beautiful two-dimensional image of the sea surface temperature. This was taken using satellite. So it's got tremendous spatial resolution. The overall features are extremely easy to understand. The equatorial regions are warm because there's more sunlight. The polar regions are cold because there's less sunlight and that allows big ice caps to build up on Antarctica and up in the northern hemisphere. Where have you been? Altogether, I have been to about 25 countries. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. That's really cool. I wish I were you. Was really fun say. Where did you go? I have been all over Asia. Actually one of my favorite place is Laos. Laos? Yeah Laos. Have you heard of it? Yeah. I have heard of it but, I don't know about it. Really, what is it like? It is a really small country. There are so many beautiful mountains and rivers and the people are just amazing. Now crack your PTE sitting at your home. Language Academy brings to you the smartest AI-powered practice portal, with instant scores and feedback for all the tasks. Along with the practice questions, access free sectional and full mock tests, and get instant scorecard with in-depth feedback and analysis. For more hidden secrets, tips, strategies, and proven templates, click the link below and subscribe to our video course today.